Welcome to The Lab. I'm Science Rob, and on this show, we're answering your carbon capture and sequestration questions with fun science experiments. Today's question comes from Zhao in Malaysia, and he asks, do you only test your rock properties in the lab? Great question, Zhao. We do perform a lot of testing on core samples in the lab but we can also measure many of the same things in a well. Now let's take a look at how we make measurements downhole in a well. We'll take mechanical properties as an example. Now, we can't lower the press we used in the last episode, so we need another way to stress the formation and measure the response. The answer, it turns out, can be found in my favorite childhood toy. We're not gonna put this in the well, but we are going to make some waves. And this is a great example of acoustic waves. There's compressional waves, which go in the same direction of wave propagation. And we also have shear waves, where the vibration occurs side to side, perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation. Now we need to point out that acoustic sound waves that you can hear are also a form of motion. To demonstrate that, I put a speaker in this bowl and covered it with plastic wrap. Put some rice on top, and we're going to demonstrate now how sound waves will induce motion in the rice. How neat is that? In fact, by making sound waves travel through a medium, we are applying small temporary stresses, which result in small strains that can be seen as motion. By measuring how sound waves travel through a rock, we should be able to say something about its mechanical properties, which are imperative to note for the safe operation of CCS projects. Again, at the surface, you can physically move the material but downhole, we must use a tool to do this. For that, we use acoustics, essentially a very strong speaker that causes an acoustic wave to propagate through the formation, and we then listen for the response. So, what does this look like? In most common media, like rocks, we cannot see sound waves because the vibration occurs too quickly and the wave travels too fast. For this next demonstration, I think we should clear the table. For example, I can create an acoustic wave and make it propagate through this cinder block by hitting it with this hammer. But can you see it? Not even if we slow the camera down a hundred times because that wave is traveling thousands of feet per second in such a stiff medium. Let's see if we can see the wave in this block of gel. Here we can really see the wave especially if we view it in slow motion. Because the wave travels very slowly in such a compliant medium. As I mentioned before, there are two main types of waves we use to interrogate rocks down hole, compressional and shear. In the compressional wave, as I just showed you, the strain or vibration occurs in the same direction of wave propagation. But in a shear wave, the vibration or strain occurs perpendicular to the direction of wave propagation, which is still along the body of the gel, and the wave moves visibly slower. Now by building a tool we can lower in a well, which makes both compressional and shear waves propagate in different directions in the formation, we measure the formation response to stress in different directions. And from that, we can interpret the mechanical properties of interest in three dimensions. Advanced acoustic downhole tools are the perfect way to do what we represented in the lab today. They are lowered into a well on an armored electrical cable, which provides both electrical power and digital communication back to a computer at the surface. We excite four different modes of sound waves in the formation by firing a transmitter. Think of it as an audio system speaker. And we listen from several feet higher in the well with a receiver array just imagine a line of microphones. 
By measuring the time it takes different types of sound waves to travel a known distance, we determine their velocity in the formation. We do this while moving the tool continuously up the well, taking these measurements every few inches. We can log thousands of feet of these measurements in just a few hours. As you saw in the experiment, acoustic wave propagation relates directly to rock mechanical properties. The continuous vertical profile of mechanical properties thus becomes the backbone of our first mechanical earth model. We don't only do these measurements in the lab. We also have a variety of measurements that we can take down whole. Thanks for watching this episode of Science Rob. I hope to have sparked your curiosity and eagerness to learn more about carbon sequestration. Stay tuned for more, where I'll answer your questions with a fun science experiment. See you in the next one.